literally almost ruined the whole goddamn film for me. Which my opinion is, if you are that scared to sit next to another human being and catch some disease that has a 0.3% percentage chance of killing your ass, why would you sit next to me in this goddamn theater full of I don't know how many goddamn the the uh, pe uh, seated? Why would you sit next to me there? Why would you come to this theater? It's Spider-Man. It's not like you're going to go see The Wizard of Oz. You're going to see a film that is going to make a billion dollars. Clearly, you're going to walk into the theater and see a thousand motherfuckers sitting there. You're going to sit ass shoulder next to somebody. Why would you come there if you're not scared to catch a goddamn disease? Like... She lucky I'm a nice per the person. I'm sorry. He's lucky I'm a nice person. I almost coughed on him. <laughs> like I was like, what the like? People are just crazy, bro. Movie was good though. Movie was good. Let's talk. Let's not take away from it. The movie. A lot of people. Quite a few people. Before I even walked into said theater and sat next to this goddamn man who was leaned over in his chair like Darkwing Duck, trying to hide his trying to hide himself from getting COVID, like. Besides that, there were a lot of people who told me before I walked into the theater that this was a good film. And my experience a lot of the time when people tell me a film is a good film is the film ain't really that good. And everybody just having that sheep mentality of, oh, well, Bob, who works with me at FedEx, thinks it's a good film. And I want to have something cool to talk about when we're at the water cooler. So let's do it. I don't even know if you even have water cooler conversations anymore after this whole pandemic bullshit. But with that being said, film was lit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um... Key thing, spoiler alert, my favorite thing was my fear when you get to the part, and spoiler alert, my fear when I got to the part where you saw all the Spider-Mans unite and you saw Tobey Maguire come back, you saw the very tall, skinny one who I, who's very emotional, oddly very emotional. I never noticed in the old Spider-Mans he was that emotional. I will say he did want to have one of the coldest scenes I've ever had seen was when, was when in that first Spider-Man, I forgot his name, but he was there. I did think the reunion of all three of them to a certain extent. I was worried that it would come off corny. It didn't come off corny. It didn't. It really didn't. I think this film told... This film teached a very interesting lesson, lesson about cause and consequence. Conse about consequence, we'll say that. It's a very interesting lesson about... Nigga, sometimes it's better to deal with this bullshit than the other bullshit that's waiting for you. You know, I think a lot of times, specifically for adults, kids who are watching this film right now who are 14, 15, 16, you don't know this because you haven't had, to, you haven't been almost homeless yet. Well, at least most of y'all haven't, I hope not. But anyway, with that being said, there's going to be a point in your life where you go through life and you wish, you wish, you wish you could do like how he did to, uh, what's his name, Doctor Strange, have a time-bending magical nigga on standby that you can call them and be like, hey, bro, hey, listen, you remember that time? You remember that time I, I fucked Keisha? Yeah, fat Keisha, right, the one who's missing all her front teeth and everything. Yeah, yeah, the one with the one foot. Uh, could you erase that shit from everybody's memory? Because you feel me, she she had sex with me, and I, I fell asleep in her bed a little two hours too long. She took a picture of a nigga she posted me while I was asleep. Now everybody talk about me. So... Can, yeah, can you erase that from everybody's memory? You're going to have a lot of moments in your life, nigga, when you wish that was an option. And it's not going to be. This was an option for young Peter. And, you know, it teaches you that, hey, if you want to do this, there's no... And the funny thing about it was, the interesting thing about this whole situation was, had he... To, it is a really good movie. It is is a really good movie. Um... One thing that worried me about the film at first was because it's Spider-Man, and I do think Spider-Man, this Spider-Man kind of caters to a younger audience. I think they really try to keep his character pure and his actions pure. I was worried that they would not have real consequence in the film. So when Aunt May died, and even how she died, I liked that there was real consequence to his actions. I like that at the end of the film, you see this nigga going into a one-bedroom apartment with the GED test book. And let me tell you guys something. Even that wasn't realistic. This nigga has no job, no source of income. I'm assuming he might have talked to somebody. He might he had to have broken into a bank. Because let me tell you something. You are not moving anywhere into New York in a one-bedroom apartment by yourself without paying at least a thousand dollars. I don't know. I don't know. I know some of y'all who live in Kentucky and Idaho and even, even certain parts of central California think it's cheap and it's, it, it, it's hard. 
It is hard to live on your own right now. When you come to California, New York, it is hard. So even the fact that he, that was, let me tell you something. That was, the, that was, there was nothing else more unbelievable in that film. I watched, let me tell you, I watched Doctor Strange do, build, make a whole city do a whole kaleidoscope effect. I watched three different Spider-Mans come to come in one. I watched a I watched a grenade explode right next to Peter Parker's head and his whole face not blow off. He just got up and walked calmly. Let me tell you something. The most magical, unbelievable thing that let me know, nigga, this film could never happen in real life was this little nigga without a job, without a source of income, without anything. Nigga doesn't even have a GD or high school diploma. Moving into a one-bedroom apartment in New York City with no issue at all. That's when I knew, oh yeah, nigga, this is this can never happen in real life. This can never be a real life occurrence. You know. But it was a good film. It was a great film. I will say it was a great film. Um He Tom Holland is actually a very talented actor. Let's not take that away from him, too. Tom Holland is very talented. He I I there was a part of me every once in a while that kind of kind of feels a way about how you have these um, these British actors that kind of come and do American roles because my 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 natural my natural instinct is always like, bro, why can't you get a black actor? Why sorry, not a black actor. Why can't you get a um, why can't you get an American actor to do this? But if you do a good job, you do a good job. Tom Holland does an excellent job. He does an excellent job. And one thing I like about when you see. Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and the other Spider-Man whose name I keep forgetting. I like that you see that they each play a different Peter that's effective in their own right. See, a lot of the times when you watch these films, at least from my personal experience, when you watch these superhero films based off of superheroes that we grew up watching, your understanding of your understanding, your thought process of how this said superhero should be is usually only based off of what your first interpretation of a Spider-Man was. I'll give an example. I didn't have an issue with Tobey Maguire's interpretation of Spider-Man when he first did it because when he's Spider-Man, those little cocky, wise, cracking things he used to say, that reminded me of the cartoon version that I watched. That was my first interpretation of Spider-Man, the, the one from the 1990s, not the old, old one, the amazing Spider-Mans where, where you have this, <laughs> that old ass kabam. Kaboom, not that one. I'm talking about the, like the 90s one. Spider-Man and Spider-Man and 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 Spider-Man and man and and That's back when rock music was still good. Go rock. You know, they stole it from us. But no, uh, so like I like that's why I don't like New Cyborg. The reason why I don't like New Cyborg outside of the Cyborg and the Doom Patrol is because my first interpretation of Cyborg was the cartoon Teen Titan Cyborg. That's what I grew up off of. That's the real Cyborg to me. So I bring it up because I like that this film showed that there wasn't one Spider-Man that was better than the others. Each Spider-Man was good in his own right and played it well. He Each of them conveyed a different kind of Spider-Man. That's a beautiful thing. You know, it's the same thing you can argue with the Robins, with Batman, bouncing back to the DC Universe for a minute. Each Robin was different. Each Bat Robin was different. The reason why I love the new Robin, not the newest Robin, which is Damian Wayne, Bruce Wayne's son, is because... He just is so gutter, bro. He's just as gangster. So, well, that's a whole other conversation for another day. So, bring it up to so side side. Just enough to say this: um, Spider was good. I highly recommend you see it. It's a really great film, bro. And I just uh, just check it out, man. You might like it. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments.